permutations and combinations. Uh, the difference between these two and how to like reliably knock them out, so check it. Okay, so I want to go over how to do permutations, and that's when the order matters. So four people are in a line, how many ways can we arrange the line? So we have a first position, which is the ideal position to be in line, and we have a last position, which is not as great. And because of that, we know that the order matters, and we're dealing with a permutation. So how do we solve a problem like this? The first thing you need to do is to think to yourself, how many people can get that first position? Well, there's four people in line, so four people could potentially occupy that spot. How many people could get the second position? Well, if we've already picked somebody for that first position, then we only have three left to pick, and then two, and then one. We multiply these together. 12, 24. Bang. That's our answer, 24, just by multiplying them together. Uh, another permutation, there's a grand prize and a second place prize in a raffle. Four people bought tickets. How many different ways can the prizes be handed out? Well, how many people are up for the grand prize? Well, four. How many people are up for the second prize? Three. We just multiply them together and we get our answer. Twelve. Okay, so we list how many positions we have and then we decide how many people are available to be selected for each position and notice it goes four to three to two to one and this one with only two positions we pick and then we only have three to select from and we multiply them that's how we do permutations yeah so how do we tell the difference between a permutation and a combination you have to ask yourself these two questions does a change in the order give an advantage or does the changing the order modify the result uh, if your answer is yes for these questions, you're dealing with a permutation. But if the answer is no, that's a combination. Keeping in mind that a permutation is when the order is important and a combination is when it's not. So I have two questions here to kind of test how we would treat a permutation compared to a combination. So there is a grand prize and a second place prize. Four people bought tickets. How many ways can the prizes be handled out? be handed out. That's the problem from the previous sheet, remember? Um, and I just went ahead and listed them. Rather than doing that four times three, which we saw, I'm just going to list them. So if A wins the grand prize, then B could win second, C could win second, or D could win second. Same thing over here. If the winner is B, then we could have A, C, or D as a second place finisher. So now we can just count the ways of potentially how these two prizes could be handled out. And it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 ways. Okay? What if we have the same question but slightly tweaked, right? Two of the same hat are given to the first two winners. Four people bought tickets. How many ways can the prizes be handed out? So I have my list as well as the previous question, right? I got my list right here, chilling. Except it's not winner and second, it's just winner and winner. They get the same prize. So ask yourself, if A and B both win, they both get a hat or whatever, is that a different result than B and A winning? Well, no, because in this result, in this result, B and A both get a hat. So this is actually the same result and we can't count it, right? Same thing if C and A, well, we already have that combination. C and B, we already have that combination. And D, well, we already have the DA, DB, and, well, DC. So how many different ways could the prizes be handed out? One, two, three, four, five, six ways. What if you don't want to list them? Like, this does take a long time, which is why I prepped it. What if you don't want to list them and you just want a fast way to do it? With permutations, it's really easy. We know that we're going to have a winner, and we're going to have a second place. Four people can potentially win three people could potentially win second place and that's our 12 right there yeah so how do we do that with a combination well it's a little bit more tricky so let me show you really quick first thing you got to be hip with is this factorial symbol um, this factorial symbol if attached to a four means that it's four times three times two times one if the exclamation point comes after a nine then you go nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one it's just a way to represent that you multiply it by every positive integer below it yeah okay how to combinations when there is no repetition within the items and we'll, we'll talk about why that's important in a little bit but for now just kind of focus on how to do this 
If you have a combination problem, which means the order does not matter, think we're giving the same prize to two people, you make the permutation as you normally would, but step two, you now have to divide it by the factorial of how many you are picking. There are seven toppings. I want a three topping pizza with three different toppings. How many pizzas could I potentially order? So out of those seven toppings, we want to pick three and three different toppings. We don't want to pick pepperoni and pepperoni. We want pepperoni, sausage, and peppers, right? One, two, three. And so since it doesn't really matter the order, we could have pepperoni, sausage, and peppers, or have peppers, sausage, and pepperoni, and we're gonna get the same pizza. It doesn't significantly change the result. So we're dealing with a combination. Two steps, step one, the, make the permutation as normal. We have one, two, three slots available. Once we pick our first topping, and we have one less to choose from, and one less to choose from. That's a normal permutation. Now we have to divide it by the factorial of how many items we're picking. So since we're picking three items, that's three factorial. Another way to say that is three times two times one. And that's what that is down here. So we have our 210 divided by six. There are 35 different three topping pizzas you could potentially order from the spot. So this is how combinations work. This page is just extra, just in case if you're this type of brain, do you have to memorize these formulas? No, you can just look at the ways that I showed you how to break it down and just do it like that, really. Um, the SHSAT is a big fan of like, at any means possible, get the problem correct. So that's why I showed you guys the quick and dirty way to do it. This is the kind of super nerdy, smart way to do it. Uh, N is the total number of people or items. R is the amount of people items that we're gonna choose. So permutation without repetition. N factorial over N minus R factorial. If we have repetition, n to the power of r. Combinations without repetition. Uh, n factorial over r factorial, n minus r factorial. Combinations with repetitions. This is a heinous equation. r plus n minus one factorial, r factorial, n minus one factorial. Really the big three equations you're gonna be dealing with most of the time are these guys right here. This is going to be the lion's share of permutation and combinations that will be appearing on the SHSAT. Um, yeah, this could happen, but once you get to this stage, a combination with repetition, in my mind, you're almost better off just kind of pounding through it. Like, check this out. There are three flavors of ice cream and I'm choosing two scoops from my bowl. If I will accept two of the same flavor, how many different bowls of ice cream can I make? I can repeat my flavor, so I could use this equation. Or I could just kind of hardwire do it, like, you know, like check it out. We have three flavors. Let's say it's A, B, and C. I could have A, A, C, B, C, C. Now I'm just gonna erase the, the, the duplicates. We already have A, B, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's your answer. But yeah, there's a lot of ways to do these problems, but if you can put them in the category of permutation or combination, you're gonna be way ahead. Um, so I'm gonna drop another video with uh, like some work that you can do, some like practice problems or whatever. So give that a shot. And uh, if you have any, you have any questions, uh, come by the live stream 6 p.m.